So what kind of people do these happen to? Is there any particular category? I mean, is it old, young, men, women, religious, not religious? I mean, are there any common things among all the people, or is it just all kinds of people? You know, it happens to people all across the board. It, it is not relegated to one segment of society. It happens to people in all religions. Um, in, in all sects of Christianity, um, in, in Islam, in, for atheists, for oh. Jews, for um, Buddhists. Um, I have come across people from all religious backgrounds, from all um, uh, men and women, um, from children to you know, people who are aged. Um, one commonality that I have found um, among people is that they seem to be at a point in their lives where there's a bottoming out experience taking place. Ah. Um, <clears throat> it's. Can you explain for us what a bottoming out experience is? Yeah, a, a bottoming out experience is when the individual. Now, this is for people who are adults. This isn't the same for children. Children take a different category here. But for adults, um, very often, not always, but very often, they'll be at, at a period of their life where they're feeling um, a bit lost, um, feeling um, they're not very happy with themselves, or they find themselves in a position where they are very selfish and um, very self-centered. Now, to that individual at that time, it wouldn't appear to be a bottoming out experience, but after the near-death experience, and then you look back over the course of their life, you can see that it was. Now, I don't know if the person, if they didn't have a near-death experience, if that would actually look like a bottoming out experience. Um, well, now, I've read your dissertation about this, mm -hmm. um, which I believe you're turning into a book on the subject. Yes. And I know that one thing you say is that actually, um, these are if you will, life-transforming experiences for the people because not only, when they come back, they're a, they're a changed person, often. Yes, what they come back at, with a, um, a different perspective on life. Uh, they come back with a different perspective of what um, spirituality is. And they come back oftentimes with a sense of purpose in life. And it doesn't mean they necessarily know what their purpose is. Oftentimes they say they don't know what their purpose is, but they have a sense of purpose in their lives. And they, um, they tend to live life one day at a time and very much in life. They, they fall in love with life. And they find themselves wanting to be of service with other people, wanting to be of service in general. It's a major change that shifts for them. Oftentimes, it's very difficult for the people around them to handle the shift because the individual can change so much from the experience. Now, is that a lasting change or is it something, you know, that for the first three months they're a nice person and then six months later it's gone or does it seem to stay with the people? It's life changing. <clears throat> it stays with them. And um, I have known people over the course of time and it, I can say that yes, it stays with them. It's a fundamental change in the way they think and they perceive the world. Now, I believe you also said that their religious beliefs tend to change afterward as well, or there's some sort of a spiritual Yes. Um, what happens with... <clears throat> from all the different religious backgrounds, going from a fundamentalist to atheist position, people tend to move towards the center after they have a near-death experience. Every single individual that has had the near-death experience and felt the presence of another with them comes back with an understanding of the existence of God and a very strong belief in God. Um, however, for them, their belief in God as a punishing, judgmental entity that um, you know, sits aside from them and judges their actions is removed. They lose their fear of God. Now, I guess I should say that people who have had uh, the life review experience in the near-death experience lose their fear. And the life review okay. is? I should probably go through the steps. And just sure. Right from the... Sure. Um, <clears throat> I, I distracted myself at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a little rabbit running down. <laughs> you got to catch me and me back in. I'll grab um, <laughs> Okay. Somebody has a traumatic experience um, to their body, critical illness of something. The individual leaves the body and they 
find themselves looking at themselves in the, ex in the environment that they were originally in, and beginning to lose interest in that. And they find themselves moving closer to a corner in a room somewhere, finding a tunnel, going down the tunnel. In the tunnel, oftentimes they meet people or entities that they have either known in their life or at the time of the experience know. But when they return, they don't remember who they were. But in the tunnel, they meet people. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. And when you step into the area of the light, um, it's a time often when there is the life review, which is a very quick review of important relationships in an individual's life that's just passed. It, it doesn't go through every little embarrassing detail of somebody's life. But while they're going through the life review, they're standing in the presence of God. They feel the presence of God, only it's love. And they are loved more, they're safer in the arms than they felt when they were with their mother as a little baby. Now, is that true for people who are non-religious or yes. claim to have been atheists as well? Or? Yes, hmm. yes. But understand the concept of God is different than what might be defined by a religion. <clears throat> okay. So they feel this sense of warmth and love. And as they have the review, they may see actions that they took that they are ashamed of or embarrassed of, and mm -hmm. nobody is judging them but themselves in uh, that moment. So there's guilt or... The, the guilt's internal. It's, it, there's nothing imposed on the person from the outside. It's, they, are, they are witnessing their life and if there's something in there that they're not proud of, they're loved in that moment anyway. And then what happens, I want to come back to that a little later. And, and sure. then what happens is um, that situation passes and they'll find themselves confronted with a barrier. Um, the barrier could be um, a wall, a mist, a river. Um, there could be like brown up to green with a field. And the individual is brought to that place and they either know or they're asked. And oftentimes when they're asked, it's kind of a knowing asked. It's not verbalized. It's just a, a tele telepathic way of knowing. And they're asked to cross into or over the barrier. Now this is where I have never interviewed or read of anyone who's actually crossed the barrier and mm -hmm. come back. People go up to the barrier and they return for some reason. Now they either refuse to cross uh, or um, they're told not to cross. So if you, you cross the line, you ain't coming back. <laughs> That's what it appears to be. It's, um, <clears throat> yeah, once you cross that line, I guess you've crossed the line. <laughs> so. Well, and, 